up guys, Aeon Basunas here to bring the first episode of Musician Mode. Uh, and Musician Mode is an interview series where we interview musicians and they tell us their stories. So we have our first guest here, um, Ben. Uh, feel free to introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Ben Rodel Ward. I'm a bassoonist based in Chicago and I play with the Civic Orchestra of Chicago there. I'm currently finishing my DMA at Northwestern. I also play in the Illinois Symphony, and I teach at Carthage College in Kenosha, Wisconsin. All right, awesome. Um, I was also aware you're doing a few things at uh, other colleges. Um, I, I'm not sure because I was kind of looking, researching you. There's yeah. a few other colleges that I mentioned. Are you also teaching at those? Um, no, I'm, I'm teaching as an adjunct at uh, Carthage. I've done a couple of you know, residencies, kind of like what we're doing at Fredonia here, mm -hmm. or doing uh, some presentations at different schools with some different ensembles that we play in, but that's the only uh, college I teach at. Okay, um, cool, cool. I, I also teach at a couple of uh, after-school programs in Chicago, mm -hmm. uh, such as the People's Music School, uh, which is a program that provides free after-school private lessons and ensemble experiences to kids in the Chicago public school system. Mm -hmm. um, and I also teach at the Music Institute of Chicago, which is another uh, you know, after-school private lesson chamber music program. Yeah, I think that's awesome. Yes. Um, okay, so, uh, you know, you have a great res like, resume to yourself, you mean, uh, doing, doing my research. <laughs> uh, you played with uh, symphonies like the Chicago Symphony and the New York Phil, which are awesome. Uh, he's been to festivals like Tanglewood and mostly Mozart, which are kind of, I like those festivals, um, and hope to go there one day. Um, <laughs> And you studied with uh, Ben Kamins, George Sekikini, uh, and Francine Peterson, and you're currently studying with David McGill. Um, how have those experiences been, uh, and how do you think they've impacted your life as a musician? I mean, all four of those people have had a tremendous impact on my life. You know, I feel really grateful to have gotten to work with all of them in you know, these phases of my life as a musician. Um, Francine Peterson was my first teacher. Uh, when I lived in Washington State. Mm -hmm. She teaches in the Seattle area, and uh, I studied with her for seven years. And I think more than any other teacher, I you know, like owe her everything in terms of me being a musician today and me being able to work as a musician today. Um, Francine taught me, obviously, a lot about playing the bassoon, but she also you know, helped me to learn how to work, how to be disciplined, how to be honest with myself, how to, you know, think critically about my playing and then also, you know, how, uh, you know, those, those parts of being a musician that aren't directly related to playing the bassoon, yeah. you know, like, you know, like working with, with colleagues, working with conductors, working with, um, you know, personnel managers and things like that. I mean, Francine has been a freelancer in the Seattle area for the past 40 years and, um, you know, the experience that she gained from, from that and from teaching all these students was something that she, she imparted on me. And it's like, that's all stuff that I never really, like, I was just a stupid kid when I was studying with her. You know, like, I, I didn't understand what she was trying to teach me. And it's like, like, still today as I go through, you know, um, playing gigs, teaching students, um, I'm like, oh, that's what she was talking about. Um, you know, and then I studied with George Sakakini at Oberlin, um, who is, you know, was just a tremendous influence on my playing and um, is, is one of my favorite bassoonists, and I'm, I'm really grateful that he's still someone that I'm very close with and has been a mentor and a really inspirational figure for me. Um, I did my master's with Ben Caymans in Houston, and I can say the same for him, absolutely. I, he's still someone who I'm frequently in touch with and who um, is kind of like a guiding light in my musical life still. Yeah. And uh, I was lucky enough to study with David McGill at Northwestern University. And um, this, you know, these three teachers, they're all um, well, for um, Francine, George Ben, and David McGill, they're all people who are just, you know, amazing musicians in their own right and have been so generous with me and helped me so much. And so I'm just really grateful to have gotten to work with them. And I, you know, there's no way I could have done any of the stuff that I do without, without their guidance. Uh, you, you went to very good teachers and, I mean, they produced something that it's great. Well, thank you. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, since you're here for the reason you are, tell us a little bit about the uh, your trio, uh, Ritual Action. Sure, so uh, Ritual Action is a reed trio. It's uh, myself, uh, Andy Nogal on oboe, Andy Hudson on clarinet. Um, these are two really 
extraordinary performers of contemporary music who I met in Chicago. Uh, I first met Andy Hudson at the Lucerne Festival Academy in Switzerland, and in 2017 we were there together. And we really hit it off, you know, we, as soon as we found out that we were both, that was the year before I moved to Chicago. Uh, as soon as we found out that we were both going to be in Chicago the next year, it really, um, you know, like this spark in our relationship put up and, and we knew that we wanted to find a way to play together. And Andy, you know, the other Andy, um, who's the uh, Oboe Sintaliente, which is a contemporary music uh, ensemble in Chicago that's really extraordinary. Um, they knew each other and they had, you know, kind of talked about, oh, like maybe we could put together a woodwind quintet sometime and blah, blah, blah. And uh, so they got together and were like, let's, you know, let's just like sit down and read some read tricks. And so we got together and it was just like, you know, immediately we, we had great chemistry as a group, uh, both playing together and just uh, interpersonally. And we were like, yeah, but we've got to play a show. You know, and we had, I, I, I had played in a read trio for a little over two years when I was at Oberlin. So I knew a lot of repertoire, and there was one new piece, or two new pieces that had been written for us. I was like, oh, we should try this. And, you know, it, um, Andy's brother Nathan Hudson uh, wrote a great read trio that we're playing tonight at Fredonia, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and so we already had kind of like a mini repertoire. And we built from there. We found um, Jamie Lee Sampson's piece, um, which had already been written but not premiered. And so we premiered that that fall in Chicago. And it's really, you know, like nowadays Andy Hudson is in Greensboro. Uh, Andy Noble and I are both still in Chicago, so it's logistically a little more difficult. But in the, you know, over this past year, we found ways to, you know, be in the same place and make things happen. And it's it's just based on kind of our you know, commitment to, to playing with each other and also just like the amount of joy that we all get from, from being together and making music together. So it's, yeah. it's a really special project. Yeah, that sounds really awesome. Um, I'm actually just in a, a read trio right now, but oh, no it's way. with, uh, but it's with uh, soprano sax. Mm. So it's a little bit of an interesting mix. Instead of clarinet? In, uh, instead of oboe, actually. Really? So it's, um, we're kind of figuring things out. We're taking a little bit of, uh, normal read trio music yeah. with oboe. Who do you guys um, uh, Well, we just kind of developed so far. Yeah. So we're figuring out what we want to do, um, and we hope we can kick it off, because I think within our first rehearsals, we're already sounding pretty good. So Excellent. hopefully that's something that can work. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but I also read that um, you do improvisation with bassoon. Um, and I think with, I mean, when you put improvisation in music, you don't really think of bassoon. Mm -hmm. and but nowadays, I think there's a good number of bassoonists that are doing that. So mm -hmm. why don't you tell us about that? Because I think that's really interesting. Sure. I mean, first I want to be clear that um, when I say I improvise, I don't like play over changes. Like I don't play mm -hmm. jazz. You know, that's um, not because I don't want to, because I can't. You know, it's like, <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't have those chops. You know, those like you know I. I went to school with a lot of really amazing jazz musicians at Oberlin, and like watching the discipline with which they work and they learn repertoire and their knowledge of form and their knowledge of, um, of harmony is just like, I'm not even, you know, I'm, I'm not even in that ballpark. You know, it's like, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm completely like, every time I, I see a jazz combo play, I'm like, I'm a half a musician. You know, it's just like, <laughs> so, so I want to be really clear that that's not what I do. I, um, I do you know, what could be called free improvisation. Mm -hmm. um, and that was something that I first got into at Oberlin. Uh, there's a really extraordinary bassoonist, Dana Jessen, who uh, she plays with the Splinter uh, uh, Reed Quintet. Right, I'm, and, I'm familiar with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're really amazing. Mm -hmm. and, and so she uh, actually was living in Oberlin, um, still is living in Oberlin, and she teaches uh, professional development in the conservatory there. And all these people were like, yeah, you need to go. Like, there's this bassoonist Dana, and she's giving a concert. I was like, yeah, you know, whatever. Um, I don't really know about, you know, like, what's like a bassoon gonna do? And and, and <laughs> so, and I I was working as an usher at the time, and I needed to usher at 7:30. The concert was at seven on the other side of campus. So I was like, you know, I'll show up and I'll like listen to 10 minutes of this, and then like I'll go to work. And I went and I missed my shift because I was just like so complete. Like Dana started playing, and I was like. What is she doing? It's like I had never imagined the bassoon. Like, and yeah. I, re I remember this afterwards. You know, she did three sets: one set on bassoon, one set on bassoon, 
without the read and one set on the read alone. And I was like really skeptical about how that was going to work, but it was, you know, if, like if you've heard, heard Dana play, you, you know what she can do in each, each of those settings and it's, it's kind of, it's jaw dropping. Um, wow. And I, I remember I literally went up to her afterwards and I was like, what did you do? She was like, what did you do? I was like, how did you do that? And um, so she, you know, she was generous enough to work with me a little bit and show me some of the stuff um, that she had been working on and point me in the direction of, oh, listen to this person, listen to that person. And mm -hmm. um, so that's become a part of, I practice part of a thing that I do uh, since then. And it's really, it's something that challenges me as a music musician uh, a lot. I, you know, and it has also allowed me to play with a lot of people that I wouldn't have played with otherwise. You know, people who are coming more from uh, a jazz mentality, people who are, um, you know, working with electronics, people who are mm -hmm. coming from, uh, you know, like more of a noise background and things like that. Yeah. So, um, you know, these are all uh, like areas that I'm able to to access by playing that kind of music, and I'm really, it's really exciting for me. Yeah, it sounds pretty awesome. Um, so, uh, the next thing I wanted to ask you is, uh, so I had this picture that I found on your website and I thought, oh. it was, I, I thought it was really cool because it was a picture of a contrabassoon with a contrabass clarinet uh -huh. and, and uh, don't worry guys, I will pop this up on the, when I edit the video. I was worried, this is a good uh, picture. But, <laughs> no, 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 I'm not trying to find bad pictures of you, but yeah, tell, tell us about this. So this is a picture of uh, me and Zach Good, who's mm -hmm. one of my very closest and most dear friends and uh, one of my most long-term collaborators. Uh, he's currently the clarinetist in 8th Blackbird. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's also my roommate in Chicago. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> That's and awesome. So Zach and I were at Oberlin together and um, formed this really special friendship and um, started playing together as a duo, we commissioned a couple of pieces and we also improvised together and um, sort of devised our own pieces together. So we have, um, we both have these, anyway, we won't forget. Um, <laughs> so, so anyway, that, that summer we were at the Banff Center um, for the Ensemble Evolution Program, which is a uh, program of the International Contemporary Ensemble. Mm -hmm. And um, the, that performance that the picture is from is a, you, I would call it maybe a structured improvisation that the two of us devised for contrabassoon and contrabass clarinet. Uh, Zach bought this, uh, this contrabass clarinet maybe three or four years ago. It's, it's a beast of an instrument, and I've never heard anyone play it like him. It's just like, oh, wow. you know, he, like <laughs> he starts practicing like in the morning, and it's like, it's like there's a dragon in the room next door. <laughs> and, you know, and, um, and so anyway, we, we you know, kind of mapped out this piece of like, you know, there, these, are, these are the sections, and these are the kind of interactions that we're having during that. Um, and uh, we called it Gertrude because uh, Zach had, he was really into naming uh, pieces like weird, unexplained female names at that time. Um, and yeah, it was, it was really, uh, it, I think it was a pretty cool piece. People, people yeah. dug it. So um, yeah, he's, he's one of the people that, that I've gotten to play a lot of that kind of music with and who is also uh, really opened my my mind and my eyes to uh, a lot of that kind of music because he's really really deep in it and really you know an amazing practitioner of it. Yeah, that sounds awesome. I I saw that picture. And I'm like I have to ask him about <laughs> this because I mean that combo is just like two lows. I mean like I hope I don't know if we have a recording of it. I hope we have a recording somewhere. I should find it. And and I'll do some looking for it. But yeah, yeah if you come across it, feel free to send it to me. And yeah, if you come across well, I, yeah. <laughs> I hope it's not on the internet. But um, I think the best way to end this is by saying a, kind of a funny story. So I think as bassoonists, and I've made many videos about this, but as bassoonists, and you've mentioned this yesterday in the master class, we have a lot of read problems. And oh. I think there's a lot of good stories that can come off of these reads. So do you have a, um, a story that I think was either an off, made it an awful, made something an awful experience or something that you could laugh at net? you know, now that it could be anything. It doesn't have with to be your best specifically. one. With Reed specifically? Uh, yeah. Well, it's hard to laugh about Reed. <laughs> of course, I mean, of course, none uh, of us laugh about it because it's part of our profession like a little the, bit. You know, like, like one of the, the cons most consistent 
uh, sources of anxiety and pain and despair in my life. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of it. Um, I mean, I have a lot of the classics, like, you know, like, I, I, a trumpet player stepped on my read in middle school and, and all this stuff, and um, I've definitely had a lot of experiences with reads that have taught me a lot mm -hmm. in terms of just managing it because it's a big part of you know being able to perform the way that I want to perform yeah and the frustrating thing about it is that you know reads in and of themselves are unreliable because they're constantly changing I mean I flew here from Chicago yesterday <laughs> it's not that different but it's different it's and it's, it's humidity I mean that's a simple change that I think yeah and so I, um, you know, I, I've gotten in the habit of in the winter, I keep my reeds in a plastic bag that also has a damp it. Mm -hmm. And um, I actually, I was in Charleston two summers ago for the Spoleto Festival and we played this concert. And uh, the wife of the founder of Damp It was there. Wow. And she was like, because that's the thing that string players usually use, you know, they put it like right. you know, to stop their instruments from cracking and whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, so she was like, looking for like some string player um, who she could like, take a picture with because they used a damn it, which was her like, husband's thing. Or whatever. <laughs> and uh, my fiance, who was not yet my fiance at the time, was there and, and she was like, oh, like my, my boyfriend has a damn it. And so there's like all these pictures of me with like <laughs> the founder of Dampit's wife. And like holding like my read case with the <laughs> data and like a plastic cup. Like, yeah, I, so I, I don't guess know. So, yeah. I don't know if those are out there anyway. But um, that, yeah, <laughs> that's the best read story I got. Well, I think that was a pretty good read story. Um, but yeah, thanks. Thank you so much for giving me your time to interview and for musicians out there to meet you. And uh, I hope you had fun. Um, Absolutely. But uh, with that said, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, stick all the way to the end. If you did, feel free to leave a like on the video and subscribe to my channel. Or if you're viewing this on IGTV, feel free to follow me. Um, but uh, this is one episode of many, and uh, thank you so much for starting it up. Well, thanks and for inviting me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, so um, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you later.